Hey, how's it going out there? Today, we want to talk about lipless crankbaits and the versatility of them and the different modifications that you can do to these and other crankbaits to help out your fishing and put more of them in the boat. So stay tuned, it should be informative. may be thinking why why a lipless crankbait well a lipless crankbait is unique in that it has a really tight wobble uh, generally good in springtime but as you'll see I caught some fish and generally do catch fish year-round on it so it's a very versatile bait it casts really good depending on you know the rig you're throwing it on and it's got a it's got a rattle to it So there's different types of baits. This one I'm holding here is from Critical Baits. And they were at the uh, Bassmaster Classic. You know, these were, they had them on a table. They were $3, but I imagine they're gonna be a whole lot more. They're just trying to get their name out there right now. But it feels like about a 5 8 to a 3 quarter ounce lipless crankbait. Now you've also got a Strike King model, which this is a 5 8 And this is called a two tap. I want you to listen to this. Okay, so it's got a real deep sound to it. Use these before they come through the water really nice. Um, I like these two taps. And guys, I'll tell you what, I throw these around cover a lot. This particular one, half ounce, and it's a lot like the Critical. It's got a real, you know, real nice loud rattle to it. This particular one I caught my PB on, eight and a half pounds. So I'm partial to this particular bait. But these cotton Cordells, you can pick them up at Walmart for like $2.27. So, you know, if you're gonna throw in a lot of wooded cover and whatnot, I'd suggest picking a few up. They're a great search bait. So that's what I use, that's what I use the lipless for more than anything, because it sinks. So I can fish this in the water column anywhere I want to. Um, like I say, it casts a mile, uh, you know, no problem in the wind. A uh, good tight wobble and if I want to fish what I normally do in my lake is I throw up close to the bank and then I just slow reel it down and I'll let it fall a little bit and then I'll bring it up let it fall a little bit bring it up as it comes down through that ledge uh, that works pretty good sometimes you just you know throw it out in the water column let it hit the bottom and just rip it up and reel it in rip it up reel it in uh, straight retrieve you can take uh, I'm sure you guys know how to do this figure out your rate of fall you know if you got a seven foot rod taking and let the lure come down to the butt of the rod and just throw it out the side of the boat and count down how long it takes to go seven feet and then just do your multiplication from there now if you do do it that way remember when you throw it out there it's going to have more resistance as the pendulum's down. So you're going to have to let it, you know, glide down a little bit longer than what you would think from your countdown. I don't know the percentage, but uh, keep that in mind. You know, if you're fishing, you want to fish right over the top of a brush pile that's, you know, 12 foot deep or something like that. And you've got three and a half seconds for seven foot, you know, let it go four or five seconds, bring it up through there. Uh, they're not weedless by any means, but with the tight wobble, they do come through cover fairly well. The other nice thing about these, you can rip them through the grass. You know, as you're bringing them through and you get a little grass on it, just rip it a couple times and keep reeling. And it'll, it'll kind of shed that off. I'm not sure what the dynamics are, but this will shed grass a whole lot easier than a square bill or something like that. 
So very versatile bait, good search bait. Let's get into the modifications that you can make to these lipless crankbaits and or really any other crankbait you want to. So one of my biggest problems is, is losing the baits in the wooded cover. I throw them a lot in the wooded cover. So for me, we're gonna do a couple modifications. One is we're gonna put that little spinner on the back of it. See that? That'll keep it from hanging up as much. It can still get hung up, but it does reduce your odds quite a bit. The other modifications we're gonna to make to this, if you notice, I took the snap rings off as well. I left the one on top because I'm gonna I'm gonna tie off to the one on top. But on the back and on the bottom, I took those snap rings off. You want the fish to hear the rattle inside the bait. You don't want them to hear the rattle of the hooks and everything else. So I went ahead and removed the hooks. And what I'm replacing that with is 50 pound braid. Just whatever you have sitting around, 50, 65 pounds, something like that. And I'm gonna use the braid to tie that off. Now I'm using Colorado blade here. And normally I'll use a uh, just a regular spinner blade. I've got these at Bass Pro Shops. And I'm out of the regular blades. But these should work pretty good. All we're trying to do is just add a little bit of flash to it in the back. That's it. Let's go ahead and go one step farther. Let's go ahead and put a red hook on there to give the fish a good target. And to do that, of course, you need a good set of snap ring pliers. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our 50 pound braid, we're gonna fold it about in half, run it through the bait, and run it through the hook. Okay. Then we're gonna take and make a loop here in the end. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna fold the line over, and pull it back through like that. Then we're gonna take the other two tag ends and we're gonna run those through that loop like so. And then start pulling it down. Now before you get it all the way down, take a real small screwdriver, drill bit, something like that, and stick it in that hole so it makes a small loop and then go ahead and tighten it down. Get it good, good and tight. Okay. Get a little bit of that excess off. Then we're gonna put two overhand knots in it. Now it's nothing new using braid. Again, pull that tight. And that time we went direction that way, so this time we're gonna tie the overhand knot the other way. So they're opposite each other. Again, pull that nice and tight. Then pull your screwdriver out. Put your two tag ends off. And guys, don't cut those tag ends too close. Um, I know everybody wants to keep their tag ends really close, even on, you know, all their knots, but, you know, give that knot a chance to slip a little bit. Put a little super glue on it, and that is pretty important. And then when you get done, you know, give it a good pull. Make sure it's on there. I know I told you not to, but on this particular one, because it's braid, you do want to give it a pretty good tug. Okay, so now to the big advantage of using the braid ring versus the split ring. When a fish gets a hold of that and they get to turning and twisting, they can't get any leverage because that braid's gonna twist up, you know, real tight. It'll, it'll go around three or four times. So they can't get any leverage to toss that bait out. So that's gonna help you once you get a fish hook. Of course, you're, you're, if you put the spinner on the back, you're gonna lose some of your ability to get that second hook in them or if they come up behind it. Uh, most bass, so they're gonna hit it from up front, but when they do get it and they start jumping and spinning around, they're not gonna be able to, you know, that split ring's not gonna stop the hook and give them leverage to throw that bait out. So some of the disadvantages 
to a lipless crankbait is they don't displace a lot of water. So in the middle of summer when the fish are real active, um, you know, they're not, they're not making a big wobble in the water. It's real tight. Uh, most of the time the rattles in it are, are pretty, I don't want to say soft, but they're, you know, they're a little tinny. They don't have that big knock on them. And unlike a square bill, when, when you're running this through cover, especially wood cover or something, and you do get it hung up, it's not like a square bill. A square bill, when you start bumping things and it hangs a little bit, you know, you don't yank on it. You kind of back off of it and see if it'll float its way out of there. And then restart it again. Um, you can't do that because this bait is going to sink. So when you do get hung up, you're going to have to go in after it. Uh, there's not much, much getting it restarted once it gets hung up. So there are some disadvantages to this versus a, um, you know, a fat free shad or a DD22 or something like that, uh, a build crankbait. But I still fish these a lot. I fish them year round. Uh, like I said, it's a good search bait. So guys, go out and pick you up some uh, lipless crankbaits and we'll see you on the next one. A little nicer fish. Not bad. If you enjoyed this video, hit like and subscribe. Let's get out on the water and have a great day.